Welcome to Kenyan Seekers Bible Study. My name is Elder Dario Palmer, and this is my beautiful and lovely wife, Dawn. Hi. And we are going to study the word of uh, the word of God tonight. I'm excited about what God has to say yes. for His people on tonight. Before yes. we get started, uh, let's have a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for our lives, our health, and our strength. Thank you, God, for being a good God and watching over us all, Lord. We pray, Father, that you will forgive us of anything we may have said, done, or thought wrong on today. Place us, God, in right standing with you so that our prayers are not hindered and that you can come in, Lord, and truly do a work in our lives. We pray, Father, for our Bible study on tonight, Lord, that it will bless someone's marriage, God, and, and relationships. Those that are not uh, married, Lord, that they will learn something, God, that they will be able to store and then apply it when necessary. We pray, Father, that you will continue to bless the angel of this house, our pastor, Pastor Upton, Lord, and First Lady, Lord, and their entire family. Bless them, Lord, continue to strengthen them, continue to use them for your glory, Lord. Use um, Dario and I on tonight, Lord, and uh, bless the lesson. This we ask in your precious son, Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. We are excited about tonight, so we're going to get started. If you have a, a writing instrument, you might want to take that out because uh, you may want to take some notes. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you have your Bible, you want to get that out too. Um, last week, if you remember, we could recap a little bit. Um, but the title of last week's lesson was What's Love Got to Do With It? So if you haven't got a chance to listen to that one, uh, listen to it. Go back and go look at it. It's going to bless you. It's going to bless your marriage. Even if you're not married, it will, it will definitely uh, speak to you. Um, one of the things that we learned last week was the title, mm -hmm. um, not just the title, but the definition. I mean, the definition of the word love. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to recap on that. It says love is the giving of oneself and all that one have for the benefit of another without expecting anything in return. Amen. That is a beautiful definition. We also learned last week that God is love. Yes. Love and God are synonymous. It is one and the same. Yes. And that's beautiful. But tonight, along yeah. with love. That love has to be maintained. Amen. So tonight we're going to talk about marriage maintenance. Yes. Marriage maintenance. Love it. Love it. Um, everybody knows that things require uh, some type of maintenance. Mm -hmm. If you buy a um, house, you don't buy one without understanding that it's going to require some type of upkeep. Whether right. you have to mow the lawn or change a light bulb mm -hmm. or do some electrical um, issues or some uh, plumbing problems that may arise, you're going to have to put some work into it. Mm -hmm. Even some communities uh, require uh, something called a maintenance fee. Yes. That's this ongoing fee that you got to pay every single month mm -hmm. because of issues that arise all the time, every month after month. Mm -hmm. And those fees, they just keep going up. They mm -hmm. just keep going up, but they're always, they're always there and they never end. It's the same thing if you're buying a car. You don't buy a car without knowing that you got to change the oil. Mm -hmm. You got to change the battery. Got to change the tires. Mm -hmm. um, it, those things, just they just come up. So when we buy things in life, we know that these things require maintenance. Yes. But for some reason, some reason, people believe that they can get married and their marriage can run on what's called autopilot, like a marriage autopilot no, no, without no. requiring any type of upkeep or maintenance. Mm -mm. Um, they really believe that it doesn't require any repairs. They can just keep living day by day and things will run smoothly. Hmm. People will actually spend upwards of 10, 20, $30,000. And some people spend way more than that. But $30,000, the average that people will spend on a wedding day, mm. they'll spend that kind of money on that day. Mm. And after that day, don't think they will require any more money to upkeep the marriage. Mm -hmm. um, that's just not true. Right. And by the way, right. flowers and candy is not marriage maintenance. That's right. <laughs> no, that's, that's right. You don't maintain your marriage by buying flowers or candy. Mm -mm. It just I know this is Valentine's month and we had that a little while ago and those things are nice. But buying flowers and candy to maintain your marriage is the same as you buying an air freshener for your car. <laughs> it just won't work. Well, it just, <laughs> that won't keep your car up. You That's know, right. it'll help it smell good. Mm -hmm. You know, those things are nice if you buy your wife some perfume or something that helps. Mm -hmm. her, it smells good, mm -hmm. but it doesn't maintain That's right. your marriage. So Amen. tonight we want to talk about doing the work yes. to keep your marriage 
um, running smoothly for years to come. Amen. All right. Amen. So Amen. the first thing we need to do. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's write this down. We got to write this down. All right. Mm-hmm. Let's get into it. Don't ignore the warning lights. Yes. Yes. Don't ignore that. Mm-hmm. If I'm driving my car and uh, a warning light comes on, mm-hmm. that's an indication to me that something is not right. Something is not uh, running smoothly. Mm-hmm. Some lights that come on in my car re- require immediate attention. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you one of them right now. Mm-hmm. If that uh, engine light comes on that says your car is running hot, you got to pull over right away. That's right. That's From right. experience, mm-hmm. other guys out there know what I'm talking about. If that comes on, mm-hmm. you got to turn off the car. Yeah. You yeah. can't keep driving it. Don't even try to get off the expressway. No, mm-hmm. turn it off and pull over Yeah. right then. Right. If not, you're not going to be able to keep that car much longer at all. Mm-hmm. And then there's some lights that come on uh, that tells you, okay, you got some time. Like right. if my fuel gauge comes on and my fuel is running low, I got an indicator that's saying, okay, it's running low. Mm-hmm. I got time to mm-hmm. get to the gas station. Right. I may not have a lot of time, mm-hmm. but I do have time to get to the gas station. So we got to pay attention to those lights. But yes. in either case, if ignored... It can lead to problems. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. you will be stuck on the road somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Um. Th- there are some people though who actually try to ignore the problem, mm. regardless if it's a serious light or not so serious light that comes on. They'll ignore it. Mm-hmm. Imagine imagine this: being in somebody's car. You're driving. You're, you're a passenger in mm-hmm. somebody's car, and um, you notice that the tire. It sounds like the tire is going flat, mm-hmm. but you're not driving. Okay. Mm. The person that's driving is ignoring that. They don't. They don't hear nothing. That's they don't. Right. You hear the tire going down. It's getting worse, mm-hmm. and they're acting like nothing's wrong. Um, you're looking at them like it's time to get out. You. <laughs> you you you're looking at them like don't don't you hear that? Yeah. And they're like, oh, no, that's nothing. It's it's good. It's good. But the sound is getting louder and louder and louder. And you're like, listen, you got to pull over. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have to pull over. Mm-hmm. Well. You can't keep, some of you know that, you know that, you can't keep driving your car fast right. with a flat. That's right. You can't do it. You can't do it because you're going to run, you're going to run into some problems. After a while, the, you're going to lose control of the car. Mm-hmm. And and then if you have, if you ever try that, people are going to be, it's really bad when other people notice you got a flat <laughs> and you're still trying to drive fast. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to be like, hey, hey. They're going to be pointing at your car like, you got a flat. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, I'm good. Don't worry about it. I'm good. You, thumbs up. No. No. no you cannot. You, you no. can't wave back like everything is good. That's right. You really have a problem. Amen. You really have a problem. Amen. And this, uh, this same thing applies to our marriage. Yes. We can't ignore the signs. No. So, mm-hmm. Sister Dawn, you got to tell us. You got to help. You got to help us out. Mm-hmm. What are some of the signs mm-hmm. What are some of the warning signs in our marriage that something's not right? Okay. Well, the first is that we have to pay attention to the unusual noises, just like he mentioned the noises that you might hear in a car when a car is going flat, right? Um, that would be in a marriage, maybe your spouse's tone of voice now okay. has changed. Right. Uh, maybe um, they're raising their voice. You know, it's a, a little more elevated than usual. All right. We want to pay attention to those things because it's an indicator that something's not right. Okay. Right. Uh, our scripture, Proverbs 15, one says a soft answer turneth away wrath. Unfortunately, some of us, if somebody catches the wrong tone or someone's voice gets elevated, we we're quick to have a, a an elevated response or our tone will change. But that's not what God wants us to do. He wants us to have a much softer answer. Why? Because it can diffuse the situation. What, it what can hap- diffuse. Right. But what, what happens mm-hmm. when the person, let's say it's the husband, and he, he don't raise his voice mm-hmm. because he ain't saying nothing at all. Mm-hmm. What about the person that gives you that silent treatment? Okay. You, I know we heard of silent treatment before. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. when you don't say nothing. Mm-hmm. Well, you got to pay attention to the lack of noises now. Okay. Just because you don't hear anything, like even when you get the warning sign that your gas is going low in a car. It may not make a, a noise when that light comes on and the gas tank isn't making any noise, but you still have a warning uh, sign there. So when someone is not speaking and they're giving you the silent treatment, this is now a breakdown in communication. It's a lack of communication. That's when now uh, it would be the same as you starting the car and you're turning the key 
Or right. you're pushing a button and nothing's happening. Right. It's not turning on. You no can't noise. get a response at right. all. So I can't get a response out of my husband or you can't get a response out of your wife. That's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. So Ephesians 5 and 28 tells us, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. So it, because we don't ignore our bodies and we, you know, and because we also don't want to be ignored, don't right. ignore your spouse. That's good. You know, don't remain silent when someone is speaking to you. Number one, of course, it's rude, but also it's unnecessary. That's good. It's unnecessary. If the timing isn't right to talk, then you can say, you know, I, I, I do want to discuss this. I'm not really happy at this moment or I'm disappointed or I'm frustrated or whatever. Let's talk a little bit later today. Because I don't want to get into it right now. That's better than getting nothing at all. No That's response true. at all. That's true. Yeah. Uh, sometimes in our car, uh, it may not make noises, but mm -hmm. you get an indicator that mm -hmm. says your engine is running hot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in a marriage, uh, that's not good. Right. What does that mean? Right. That means now somebody's angry. Okay. <laughs> somebody's temper, uh, temper is risen a little bit, right? So Ephesians 4.26 tells us, be ye angry. Mm -hmm. So God knows that we will get angry. There'll yes. be things that will make us angry, but be angry and sin not. not. That's right. All right. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So if your anger is causing you to fly off the handle, uh, we as Christian wives and Christian husbands need to uh, follow God's example and not holding on to our anger forever, no matter how righteous or no matter how valid we think that our anger may be, it's, we still have, we don't have the right to do it. We don't have the right to do it. Also, Ephesians 4 and 31 says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind mm -hmm. to each other. That's right. Tender hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Right, I love what it says, because it tells you, you know, you will get angry, mm -hmm. but then it tells you to sit not. Right. When you recognize that you are angry, what does mm -hmm. the Bible say? Get rid of it. That's right. It says, get rid of the anger. Mm -hmm. All right, it's there. Mm -hmm. All right, but that don't mean because you know you you know you feel justified yeah. that you have the right to now you know say things that are not that are not kind. Right. We we are still commanded to get rid of that malice, get rid of that anger, that mm -hmm. evil, mm -hmm. that whatever you're feeling in your heart, that mm -hmm. evil behavior. Mm -hmm. But be kind. It's right. not always easy. Right. To right. be kind. It's a decision to mm -hmm. be kind. That's right. And we have to be, you know, we, we have to take that seriously mm -hmm. and be intentional about forgiving Amen. our spouses. Amen. Along with not ignoring those warning lights, we know we're not supposed to ignore the warning lights. Mm -hmm. We must also do this one thing also. This is really important. You definitely want to write this down. We should already know it. It is reading the owner's manual. That's right. And the owner's manual we should know in our car mm -hmm. is inside the glove box mm -hmm. you know every time you buy a car you know you go in the glove box mm -hmm. and there's an owner's manual in there mm -hmm. well guess what our marriage has one too and that mm -hmm. is the word of god yes now yes. i don't know about you but i don't know anybody who's actually gone in the glove box mm -hmm. and read that entire owner's manual i haven't no nobody has until something goes wrong mm -hmm. now you're looking for the manual trying to find out oh how much oil this car need now you're mm -hmm. trying to look it up because you're in trouble mm -hmm. Most of the time, we wait until something goes wrong before mm. we look in the manual. God help us. But guess what? It's been in the car the whole time, mm -hmm. and we are still responsible for knowing what's in it. That's so good. You can't blame the manufacturer right. when he gave you the manual. Mm -hmm. You can look it up at any time. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. still responsible for knowing what's in it. Yes. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 3.16, mm -hmm. um, it says that all scripture mm -hmm. is given by inspiration of God. Mm -hmm. That tells us right then that our manual yes. is given by God. Yes. And yes. we yes. can use that manual. Mm -hmm. uh, it is profitable for doctrine, mm -hmm. for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Mm -hmm. It is profitable. We are to use that for our entire lives, including our marriage. Yes. yes okay. Yes, so yes. You, we have this document called the Bible, the Word mm -hmm. of God, mm -hmm. which is from God for us to use. Mm -hmm. Now, if we choose to put it in our spiritual glove box mm -hmm. and not use it, we are still responsible right. 
for the information that's in it. That's right. Because when something goes wrong, mm-hmm. we got to go back to it now mm-hmm. and start all over and say, "All right, Lord, I done messed up now. Mm-hmm. How do I how do I fix this?" Yes. We got to we got to figure this thing out. Mm-hmm. And one thing that'll help us, David told us in Psalm 119:11, he said, this is what I, he said, this is what I got to do. Mm-hmm. He says, thy word yes. have I hid in my heart yes. that I might not sin against thee. Amen. Many of our issues will be resolved early mm-hmm. if we take the word of God and hide it in our hearts. Yes. The same as with our, our, the, uh, our marriage. We got to do that. We got to take the word of God, hide it in our hearts and use it, mm-hmm. not just in our lives personally, mm-hmm. but in our marriage. Amen. If we do that, we'll see that, wow. We can resolve many issues Mm -hmm. before they start. We can solve many problems early, Mm -hmm. early Mm -hmm. before those lights come on. I don't want to wait until Mm -hmm. the light come on to realize my my car needs water or antifreeze. I don't want to wait till the light comes on before I realize my car needs oil. Mm -hmm. I need to know ahead of time that I can ward off those potential problems early before they arrive. Amen. Amen. We also have to remember, too, the longer we allow those things to just sit there, like the word just sitting there and not being read, or that manual not being picked up from time to time when we've already seen those warning signs or we know that something isn't right, it causes us to not now forgive. Okay. We've got to, you know, forgiveness has got to be the, one of the first things that you do. You know that problems will occur. You know that disagreements, because you're two individuals that think differently. Right. You're not always going to agree on every little situation that comes up in your marriage. But if someone says something or does something that offends you, you've got to know what to do. And forgiveness has got to be the first thing. It's got to happen right away. Yes. yes. It's got to happen right away. So if there's a problem in your marriage, the owner's manual says to forgive. Don't wait because huge walls are made by small bricks. That's good. We I need love to say that, that again. We need to say Huge that again. Huge walls are made by small bricks. That's true. Solve any disagreement early and forgive each other before the day ends. Practice forgiving at the offense. Wow. So as soon as you offend me, if I begin to practice, now listen, it's easier said than done, but God expects this of us. So if I say something you don't like, you're not going to say nothing back? I'm not sure, but... <laughs> <laughs> No, but honest in all honesty, we need to practice, guys, doing what's right. Okay. You know, we got to practice. We know we know how this flesh wants to respond to everything. Okay. You know, you say something I don't like, or you raise your voice, or or you're acting rude, or you're you're being silent. Then what what do you normally or fleshly will do? Okay, you don't want to talk. I don't talk. You know, you raise your voice. I'll raise my voice. You know, we it's a tit for tat foolishness. You know, and that's not what the Lord wants. He wants us to begin forgiving at the offense. All right, you just said something I didn't like, I didn't appreciate, I'm offended, but I'm going to forgive you before before I move on. I'm going to forgive you. And then by by doing that, Ephesians 4.32 says, um, being kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Right. So when we practice forgiving and trying to do it quickly, we want the Lord to forgive us when we've sinned, right? We want him to do it right away That's right. because we know our prayers will be hindered otherwise. That's right. So I, I need forgiveness, Lord, for ev- all the sins that I know about and all the ones that I don't know about. But I also need my spouse's forgiveness or I need to be forgiving of my spouse right. at the same time because Satan doesn't want marriage relationships to be... Um, um, like restored, restored, yeah, yeah. or or uh, put back together. He's right. he's that's not what he stands for. Why? Because it represents unity. It represents oneness. It represents fellowship with one another, and that's something that Satan hates. That's true. That's something true. He hates. Now, along with reading this owner's manual, which we know is the word of God, mm-hmm. there are certain things that we can do yes. to make sure that we. Um, like with my car, there are some ongoing maintenance that I have to do every 5,000 miles or every 10,000 miles or even every 100,000 miles. Mm -hmm. So the longer that you've been married, okay, the more often these things have to be done. Right. Because it's just like a car, a brand new car don't break down real easily. Mm -hmm. And that's the the fallacy that we get into. We think when we first get married, everything's perfect. Mm -hmm. It's like a brand new car, Mm -hmm. no issues. It's running smooth. Mm -hmm. And then you begin to take that for granted Mm. and think that that's the way it's always going to be. That's so good. You know, and we don't even realize that those lights Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That's in the car are there for a reason, uh-huh. and eventually they're gonna start coming on mm-hmm. because no car lasts forever yes, if sir. you don't maintain it. It's not gonna mm-hmm. give you the years that it's supposed to give you. Mm-hmm. But guess what? No, no car is gonna last forever anyway. But our marriage should. Yes. So how much more should I pay attention to this relationship? Yes. That's I should right. not be taking care of my car more than I take care of my my marriage. Absolutely. That shouldn't. Not. So there are certain things that we need to do. Yeah to make sure that this ongoing maintenance mm-hmm. uh, it continues. We gotta schedule this. Mm-hmm. So if you want this marriage to last for many miles, yes. if you want it to last for many years, yes. give us some ideas. Give, give our, um, our people that's listening, mm-hmm. whether you're married or not, these are things that you can take with you uh, mm-hmm. to use um, in your marriage yes. now or in the future mm-hmm. that will help you. Give us some ideas that we could take with us. Amen, all right, so one being um, date nights. Okay. You know, like Pastor always says that, you know, many people uh, date to marry, but you're supposed to marry to date. Right. So allow that, that to continue. You right. know, well, after you've said I do, and we know that we're living in a time where people are not feeling safe. And yes, COVID numbers are going up and we're losing some really heavy hitters. I don't have to mention names, but there have some been some great people we've lost in just a matter of a few weeks now. Um so there, there's a little bit of fear. There's a little bit of concern about being out in the public. But every date that you have doesn't have to be done outside of your home. Right. You know, you can have a date night where after dinner, you now put like a nice comforter down and you and your husband can sit on the floor in your bedroom and have dessert together. Yeah. You know, okay. that, that that's really sweet. But put the lights low and have some jazz playing. Don't know where it'll lead to. I know where he thinks it'll lead to, yes. but um, <laughs> but really, just think of some little things that you can do. You can have movie night at home. You can have game night at home. You can you know go on a nice long drive where you get to stay in your car and really feel safe. Right. You know, um, and if you are comfortable with being out, you know maybe you won't go as often, but you can still go out and sit in a restaurant and be safe somewhere and have a nice dinner and have conversation or whatever. You know, and just spend that quality time with one another. I think that's really important because a lot of times we take date nights for granted. Yeah. We do because we get busy in our lives mm-hmm. and we take, you know, for granted that, oh, she's always there. So I'll go next next month. Oh, I'll go next six months later. And after a while, you got an entire year go by and you haven't gone on one date. Yeah. You know, and it's not right. But th- the thing is. You can't take your marriage for granted no more than you can take your car for granted yes, because sir. your car doesn't care, you know, um, what your life is doing. Mm-hmm. On that scheduled time it needs oil, it don't care what's going on with your life. That's right. It's going to break down if it doesn't get what it needs. That's right. Oh, that's okay. We must give it what it needs. Amen. On Amen. a scheduled maintenance. Amen. Whether you think it needs it at that moment or not, you better you have to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, because with your car, it's going to let you know, oh, you didn't do that? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Are you getting too busy? Okay, let me let you know that um, you forgot about me. Wow. And our marriage will do the same thing. After yeah. a while, things will begin to break down mm-hmm. because you have taken certain things for granted and thinking that everything's all right yeah. because, you know, yeah. you're still there. Just because we still wake up together in the same house does not mean everything's okay. That's right. Oh, okay. so good. We, we can't take these things for granted. So Amen. although we say day night all the time, mm-hmm. all right, it's just day night. No, this is extremely serious. It is. It we really gotta, is. We, gotta take it, we can't take it for granted. We gotta I like do that. It. I like that. Uh, another idea would be to join your marriage ministry. Yes, I like that. You one. know, um, we are a part of the man- marriage ministry and we have been a part of the marriage ministry since we started yes. at Refuge. We love the people in the marriage ministry. Um, it's going strong. We, you know, we are, have been learning from one another. We pray for one another. We celebrate birthdays. We celebrate anniversaries. We support one another. Um, you know, we have uh, resources that we have read that have helped build our marriages, yes. help them um, to become stronger. And there's accountability there, which I absolutely love. So if somebody says something or has done something, we feel comfortable enough to share it and get the advice from someone else that's in a group because we don't know everything, right? you know? Right. And, and other people in the group, they don't know everything. So we're able to glean from one another and grow and continue to grow in love and continue to grow in our marriages. So join a marriage group. If you're not a member of Refuge, you know, if, you're, if your church offers a marriage ministry, become a part of it. And those of you that are a part of, of Refuge and you are married, you should become a part of the marriage 
uh, ministry. That's good. That's good. And it's true that mm -hmm. think about it. While churches during the pandemic was closing doors mm -hmm. um, at Refuge Church, we did not close our marriage ministry. That's right. Matter of fact, uh, it got stronger Amen. during the pandemic. We Amen. we continued to meet. Mm -hmm. We continued to talk. We continued to pray. We yes. continued to read mm -hmm. our different resources and materials along with the Bible mm -hmm. uh, to help our marriages. We haven't stopped yet. That's right. So that is um, that's a testament to how important yes. it is. Amen. Even Amen. during the pandemic when people are separating, yes. some people are breaking up, getting divorces, mm -hmm. all this stuff is still happening. Mm -hmm. Our management, our marriage ministry is going strong. Amen. Um, Amen. So again, if you haven't joined, if you want to join and you haven't done that yet, just contact us and we'll be glad to uh, walk you through the steps to become, uh, you know, a part of our marriage, marriage ministry. Amen. Amen. So another uh, idea for maintenance mm -hmm. is uh, attend a marriage conference uh, annually. And yes. we're, we know with the pandemic, our, our conference uh, got postponed and we're praying that in, in 2021 in the fall that it will be back on schedule. We pray. Um, but if not, I know that there are some churches and some organizations that are having conferences virtually, you know, and if you should find one, and you're not certain about, you know, the ministry as a whole or that pastor or that leader, you can always present it to our pastor, our church, and just say, I'm interested in attending, you know, this virtual conference. And I think it will be a blessing to my marriage, maybe even some of the other marriages at Refuge. What do you think about it? Here's the date. Here's the church. Here's the organization. You know, and just so that you know that you're being covered, that the pastor is aware of where you're going or what you're doing or what you're getting ready to dabble in. Um, so that, you know, we, at the end of the day, we want to get better yes, and we yes. don't want anything to get us off track. Um, so if you can, uh, if you find something that's happening now between now and, and next fall, um, present it to the pastor that's and right. see, and when ours comes back on schedule, please, please, please sign up to attend. You will not be disappointed. That's right. Now, remember these things, it does, um, many times require, um, advanced preparation mm -hmm. and even funds. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people will say, well, I really can't afford it. I can't. No, you can't afford not to do it. That's right. That's <laughs> you right. can't afford not to do this. Amen. You know, yeah. you don't buy a $30,000 car and say, I can't afford to change the oil. Mm -hmm. you, when it comes up, you got to do it. That's oh, right. I can't, I can't afford it. Uh, oh, tires. Oh, they cost too much. I can't afford to change tires. No, you can't afford not to change tires. That's right. Because when you don't do it, you put your life at risk. Amen. You're putting your marriage at risk when you don't invest in it. Yes. You have to invest in this. Amen. This is the most important relationship mm -hmm. um, that God has given us. Mm -hmm. And for you to turn around and tell the Lord, I can't afford to do it. But yet, you know, the next next year you somewhere in Jamaica, you know, having a vacation or whatever. You know, you people do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. But... Take the time out along with Jamaica, mm -hmm. along with going to Disney World, right. along with the other things that we find time to do when we want to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, take the time out to invest in your marriage. Amen. And, and maybe it, it may not be affordable one year. Mm -hmm. well, save a little bit so that the following year you go. Maybe yes. you can't go every year. Mm -hmm. But take some time out to do something, even with virtually mm -hmm. buy a book, read along with your wife. Mm -hmm. um, there's always something that you could do that's affordable that's that right. you both can make time to do. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. And then finally, we want you to pray for direction from the Lord. Yes. You know, yes. every marriage needs prayer. Every person needs prayer. And, you know, we can't leave God out of our marriages. He's, right. he's like he said, this is one of the most important relationships that God created. Yes. And so he's the one because he created marriage and everything that goes along with it. He, you know, we've got to seek the manual, but we also have to seek his face because we really want the Lord to do something great in our marriages in 2021. Many people are leaving here. We've got, you know, we hear every day somebody's husband has passed, somebody's wife has passed away. Um, and it's painful. It's painful. So um, we got we we have enough time to love each other well, to do the Lord's will while it is yet day. That's right. Because night is coming, guys, when no man will be able to 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 work. And we want to make sure that we're working diligently, you know, and faithfully on on the marriage that God has blessed us with. Amen. 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 On that note, we're going to end tonight's uh, session on. Um, uh, marriage maintenance. Yes. And uh, we hope that we said something uh, throughout these last few weeks mm -hmm. that blessed you, that really mm -hmm. blessed you and blessed you and your marriage. Amen. Um, so we're going to end with that. We know that um, we're going to uh, 
at this time take up an offering. So if you have your phone, you can take that out. You can give. We know that 100% of it goes to our mission. Yes. And uh, that will help them overseas. Mm -hmm. And we're going to end with prayer. So if you have your, if your spouse is with you, grab their hands. If they're not with you, um, then grab their hearts. You know, just pray for them. <laughs> Lift your pray. hands. Amen. Yes, yes, and Amen. pray for them. So we're going to pray. Before we do, I, I just want to say thank you to uh, our pastor and first lady for this opportunity. Um, we know that this was something new, you guys t uh, turning it on and, and seeing two faces and not one. Um, so we're grateful. Thank you so much, Pastor and First Lady, for entrusting us to do these Bible study lessons. And then we thank you, Refuge, for your participation and your love and your support. So God bless you all, and may God bless all of your marriages. Yes. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. We want to say thank you, God, for this day, for yes. your many blessings. We just ask you, Lord, to continue to bless our refuge church. Yes, God. Everything that we find our hands to do, Lord, just touch it on yes. us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, to continue to bless our pastor and his wife. Yes, God. Um, bless everyone, all the elders and uh, ministers and deacons. Yes, God. And all the partners that's yes. a part of our ministry, Lord, touch them. And especially marriages all yes. over. Yes, At refuge and everywhere else, Lord. Yes, uh, We bind the hand of the enemy that seeks to uh, kill, steal, and destroy marriages. Yes, We Lord. know that it's Satan's job. But Christ came that we might have life and have yes, a whole bunch of Lord, in the name of Jesus. Uh, bring life back into that broken marriage. Yes, God. If there is one, Lord, even now, Lord, we pray that uh, you put it back together. Yes, God. And in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Help our marriages to grow, Lord. Yes, Lord. keep you at the center of you. Yes, Lord. And we will give your name the praise. We'll give your name the honor and the glory because you are worthy to be praised. Yes, you are, Lord. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. Thank God. Amen. 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 God bless you. Bye-bye.